Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, bootlicker shells, dust lights, hearts, peasants, vassals, Cypriots, banker scum. I am a useful idiot. Let's talk more about these Cyprus surprise and this uh, crazy cycle that's going on over there now. Every day bringing something new. And um, there's a lot of lessons to be learned here other than the impending fireworks that we have going on now. But I'll get to that later. So what we have is a what they call a bail-in. So this whole idea of confiscating um, depositors' money and going after pension funds is now called a bail-in, not a bail-out. And um, this, uh, this is an interesting situation because we have a very, very small country, 18 billion euro economy with 1.1 million people, and yet they have a central bank, which is perplexing enough, but they also have a banking system with three major banks, the Bank of Cyprus, the Cyprus Popular Bank, which was already nationalized last year, and the Hellenic Bank. And um, they have total bank assets of 126 billion euros. That's 17 times the size of their whole economy. So uh, this is where the problem is. Their, their uh, banks, their financial sector is 45% of their GDP. And uh, a lot of people go there especially outside investors throughout Europe, and that's why this is so precarious. They're, they're investors who are chasing the higher interest rates that those, those banks have offered there. So it's sort of a, a, a financial haven, especially for Russians. They have a really interesting uh, connection with Russia. Russian companies and individuals have $31 billion of deposits in Cyprus. So they have a lot of exposure. Bank of Cyprus actually has a third of its branches in Russia itself. So... Uh, so we have this, uh, this small country with all these foreign investors and this huge banking system. So um, you can see what I'm leading up to. One of the problems we have here is a out-of-control, too-big-to-fail banking financial system. And uh, this is much like uh, Iceland, which uh, had a banking system 12 times the size of the whole economy. And if you take uh, the banks in the United States and, and factor in their exposure to uh, derivatives, um, we could easily we easily find ourselves in the same situation where uh, banks are just too dangerous at these sizes to have a, a banking system in Cyprus that's 17 times the size of their economy um, as far as total assets. It's really uh, very very precarious. And uh, another part of this story that is important and that we can learn a lesson from is the fact that the banks in Cyprus. Um, took 6.5 billion euros in losses, writing off Greek sovereign debt in 2011. I suspect they took a lot more losses in 2012 as well. So that's another uh, part of this that we're going to see more is uh, exposure to sovereign debt, the sovereign debt write downs. I, I have to imagine that we're going to see more of that in Europe as this uh, contraction continues and things continue to ramp down. And that's another aspect of uh, Cyprus. It's a very small economy. They have a very small tax base, which is something important to remember, and that means their corporate bonds are also limited in size. So they have very few um, possibilities. They can't really impose too much austerity, and um, they can't raise taxes, and uh, their only angle is to just confiscate money wherever they can find it, and uh, that's what they were planning to do. So Parliament uh, voted down the levy or the tax or the confiscation or the uh, theft of depositor funds, but although they're still negotiating, it may reappear another another form. Um, they adjusted the numbers at first, and then uh, they didn't want to go for that either. Now they're considering nationalizing pension funds, which is another thing where we've seen a lot already, and we're going to see more um, all over the globe. And uh, and um, the ten billion dollar, ten billion euro bailout is on hold now because they want to make sure that the bailout terms are set up ahead of, uh, ahead of time. So the EU, the ECB, the IMF, they're really playing hardball with Cyprus. And another thing that uh, strikes me about this situation that I think everyone should bear in mind is here's another situation where the it's been in the news for well over a year that Cyprus banks were having problems and that, that the country was going to need a bailout. And yet now we are at this weekend and all of a sudden, it's, it's all happening in days. They have to move now to save the country in days. So, as usual, the bankers have a gun to the head of Cyprus and the taxpayers there. 
and um, everyone involved. And uh, just why does it always have to be this way? Because that's uh, that's how this system works. So, uh, but as it turns out, Russian exposure was a uh, tempered by the fact that lots of big investors, um, and especially Russian investors, bankers, um, and their friends and families withdrew billions and billions um, in the days and weeks and months before this happened, because there's always the insiders who managed to get their boat off the ship first. So uh, so the latest that uh, just came out today is that now they're talking about overhauling the whole banking system and um, creating a bad bank and then uh, forcing big depositors to accept the losses. So they think it might be uh, more acceptable if they uh, guarantee all the deposits up to 100,000 euros and then uh, uh, take uh, a certain percentage off all their big depositors. And um, interestingly enough, they also want to make sure that all the bank jobs are safeguarded. So nobody's going to lose their jobs uh, over having these uh, banks run so poorly and be exposed to so much uh, risk. And uh, right now, the uh, the banks there are limiting withdrawals to 260 euros. So uh, theoretically, the floodgates are going to open next week if the banks, if and when the banks open. And uh, this could spread. Uh, we could see a lot of move, uh, capital flight in uh, the rest of the eurozone as well because of this. And um, if the the whole bailout situ situation isn't uh, worked out in a timely fashion, then potentially we could see a meltdown of the um, banking system in Cyprus or a withdrawal of Cyprus from the Eurozone. Um, either one would uh, probably send some shocks. I think a withdrawal from the Euro Eurozone would be a big shock, but a much bigger shock would be a meltdown of the Cyprus banking system um, and everyone basically getting wiped out and taking complete losses. And as you would suspect, that would be my recommendation. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one, too.